Well, what's going on, Gideon's Tactical family? Welcome back to another Blade Review, where today we're taking a look at a bench-made pocket knife that I believe was a missed opportunity. I'm talking about the recently released Benchmade Redoubt. On the surface, it's pretty clear that the DNA was taken from the iconic Benchmade Griptilian. You throw this profile up and most knife lovers will know exactly what knife you're looking at. And it's been a staple in many pocket knife lovers collections for years. So when I saw the press release for the Redoubt, I was initially excited. Hey, there's got a lot of similarities to the Griptilian. There's some design tweaks that I think are actually really well done that I'm about to break down with you. But when I saw the price tag of $180 street price compared to the street price of about $140 currently at the end of 2022 for the full-size Griptilian, I thought to myself, okay, well, aside from some designing tweaks, are we getting some new premium steel or maybe we're able to get our hands on a crew wear version that's going to be under $200? Nope, it's rocking CPM D2 steel. So when I saw price to materials, I just asked myself, why though? And I really feel like the Redoubt had this opportunity to either completely restructure the entire Benchmade line in a positive direction or offer something high value in some exotic blade steel. But sadly for myself, I feel like it has mainly become white noise in the Benchmade lineup, especially when I can get a Griptilian with S30V for about $40 less. So we are gonna dive in a little bit more to the D2 versus S30V that's on the Griptilian, as well as highlighting some of the great design tweaks that in fact are better in my opinion than what's on the griptilian now fun little fact about the word redoubt because i was like what the heck is that never heard of that before it is a temporary fortification that you can defend from with plans on regrouping and then reattacking it's kind of the idea of what a redoubt is and that's definitely kind of how they pitch it and you know place this in their lineup is more of a tactical folder, but I would argue it's an excellent EDC blade as well. One of the key features right out of the gate is this blade. First off, super cool coating that they have on there. Nice that it is different than what you see on the Griptilian. Usually it's wearing super well, put this through its paces and showing almost no signs of wear. You can get them plain edge or serrated. And what I really like is that it's got the 3.5 inch blade so within you know half an inch, a point five of an inch of uh, the Griptilian at like three point four five. This is like three point five five uh, on the blade length, but it's the grind geometry. It is a very high saber grind, very very high, almost all the way up, and you can see it transition right here at the swedge. Comes down. It's a very mild swedge coming into a good tip with a zero point one two five thick back here by the thumb studs, meaning that it's a hair thicker at 0.115 on the Griptilian back by those thumb studs. But you can see the difference in the grind lines, how much lower the grind angle is on the Griptilian. It comes much lower, meaning that the Redoubt is actually a better slicer, even though it is just a hair bit thicker because it is a much higher grind. So you could almost argue the Griptilian is actually a better tactical folder because it's gonna be stronger and a little bit more piercing, whereas this has more belly into a good piercing tip still, but this is a more dagger-esque blade shape with a lower saber grind. So for slicing capability, the grind angle and geometry on the Redoubt is actually better for overall general utility and EDC. Now we will circle back to that CPM D2 steel conversation in just a moment once we hit a couple other major highlights. And I invite those of you who are not yet subscribers to the channel to subscribe, become part of the Gideon's Tactical family here where every single week I'm breaking down gear, showing you what the pros and cons are so you can make wise choices when you get out there and enjoy life. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can be notified when a new video is released and smash that like button. Now the handle itself, large, full, really like that cool pattern that gray with the OD green, not even OD green, it's almost like a forest green. I really like that, kind of stands out from the market. So that's a cool feature. Lots of ribbed texturing that is not overly aggressive on the top. You've got a little bit of jimping inside as well as up top. Good kind of bell flare. Got large size hands, as you guys know. Full, large, good grip there. Uh, and it's actually gonna be uh, one point ounce, a point of an ounce lighter than the Griptilian, and it's gonna be about 3.7 on the overall weight. So that's great, that's because of that 
um, glass reinforced nylon, you know, the polymer style of handle that it has. No liners in there, so it's very similar to the Griptilian. Definitely has a little bit of that hollow feel and sound that the Griptilian has when you close it. Now, the one point of contention that's not a deal killer, but is just not needed are the jimping ribs on the back portion right here. They're not super aggressive, but they are noticeable, mainly when I was doing wood carving. If I was making the tip for a spear, those two rear fingers, my ring finger and my pinky, I could definitely feel them kind of biting in a little bit for outdoor use. Gloves would be fine, general EDC, no issue, but it was a little bit of a pressure point that I may end up actually just sanding those down ever so slightly just to make them a little more contoured, easier for outdoor use, because I think this would be an excellent outdoor folder, uh, pocket knife for camping and backpacking with, just because of the texture, and some of the other key features, that higher grind for better food prep and things like that. And even the Ricasso being a little bit larger, I was able to choke up if necessary and do finer work and almost force it into a choil roll, even though it's not really designed for that. Now there's nothing wrong with the Griptilian's pocket clip, but it definitely protrudes and it's not a loop over deep ride. And I know many of us prefer the loop over that is on the mini and full size Adamus. Benchmade took it even one step further and this is one of the best loop over pocket clips I've seen on the market recently is on this blade. Look at that. That reminds me of a SOG, but even executed better than a SOG pocket clip. Buries itself in there, full access to the screw, fully rotatable on that back screw right there. Got enough flex that even though this is pretty rough texturing, you know, very similar to what you're gonna get on the Griptilian, you know, there's definitely some good texture there. Just a different pattern, but basically the exact same texturing you're gonna get on the Griptilian and the Redoubt. I haven't thrashed any of my pockets yet because there's just the right amount of flex and tension so that it's able to ride over double reinforced pocket uh, uh, ridges, you know, on your pockets for your pants, and it'll go fully deep ride in there and is very slim, not causing any issues with ergonomics. This is one of the best design pocket clips I have seen in recent years. So I'm super impressed with that and huge kudos to Benchmade for thinking through that and designing it. I'd love to see this on more knife designs in general from Benchmade, but also from other manufacturers need to take note on how to do a loop over deep ride pocket clip correctly. Obviously you got the iconic axis lock. And to be honest, I mean, I know a lot of manufacturers, they're doing a good job with this style of crossbar locking mechanism now, but when you come back to the original and kind of the, the start of it all, you can kind of tell a little bit of a difference and it's nice and smooth on that. You got a little bit of rock side to side and none up and down. The tip buries really deep into the handle and I like that a lot. It's always sketchy when the tip, you know, it's just like a micron down in the handle. So that's nice that's really secluded out of the way. Ambidextrous thumb studs that have a good shelf into the engagement of the thumb stud to make it very easy to open it that way if you wish. Now, what about that value to material question? The D2 steel versus the S30V on the Griptilian, the street prices again, late 2022 when I'm doing this, of 140, let's say, for the Griptilian and 180 for this redoubt. And regardless if it's the blades in this video or any gear purchases in general, I always appreciate it when you use the affiliate links in the description box below to all the different distributors that I regularly partner with. It's free for you. Helps me to continue to get out there, buy blades just like this to give you rundowns and food for thought so that you can make wise choices and just enjoy learning and educating yourself about gear. And I feel like one of two things should have happened. Either one, they should have put a different type of blade steel on this, giving us something somewhat exotic, say crew wear steel, possibly you know S90V, or kept everything exactly as it is, but offered this as an alternative and an introductory blade to the Griptilian. Say offer it for 110 maybe 120 bucks. And whereas currently people look at the Griptilian mainly as the get your foot in the door Benchmade to get you started in your Benchmade collection, the Redoubt could have been that tool and now this would have been the next level up to get your hands on a Griptilian. And a lot of it has to do with that CPM D2 steel blade choice. And don't forget CPM D2 steel was on the Adamus line, which is a super heavy duty, hard use, 
folder line until I believe two years ago when they transitioned over to CPM Crewware. But when you just look up S30V steel versus D2 steel, look at tons of blade steel forums, look at blade steel breakdowns across the internet. On average, you're gonna see people recommend S30V over D2 steel. Now, CPM D2 steel is a little bit better than your generic overseas produced blades that often go for say like 60 bucks for this giant monster boker over here. D2 steel on this thing, not CPM, D2 goes for like 55, 60 bucks. The CPM just means the way it was made and there's a better consistency and strength throughout the entire blade. But what's interesting, when you go over to the Benchmade website, the CPM D2 that they are using is Rockweld at 60 to 62 and the S30V on the Griptilian is 58 to 60. So this is a harder steel than what they're doing with the S30V on the Griptilian. So I do have to say that's part of the stigma towards D2 is because of all the overseas produced blades that use it, usually not heat treating it and tempering it as well as what you're gonna get with a CPM process. But it is hard to square when you know you can get D2 steel on a lot a lot of pocket knives for 40 to 60 bucks. And I'm gonna have to pay almost $200 for a blade that has it made in America. So it's a sticky situation. In many ways, it's partly just because of what the market now and how most knife users view D2 steel as kind of a more budget steel. And if you already own a Griptilian, I don't really see the need to go after this blade. It would be better just to save your money and pick up a full size Adamus when your budget allows. But as someone who now owns both, because of the higher, slicier grind, and in my opinion, the more enjoyable deep ride pocket clip, between the two, the Redoubt is gonna be the one that I carry and use more frequently. So that's my take, but I look forward to hearing from you guys. What is your thoughts on the Redoubt, especially if you own one? How has been your experience? How's the D2 holding up for you? So far for me, I've been pleased with its performance and definitely outperforms many overseas produced D2 steel. And where do you sit with this tool? Is it something worth pursuing or had you wished that they went with a different steel or dropped the price. I look forward to hearing all the comments below. I appreciate you guys so much for coming over, taking the time out to watch this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Check out the other video popping up. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.